Welcome to Delightful, Delicious, to Lovely. My name is Christine Elise, and today I am going to be making a marinated grilled portobello, uh, portobello mushrooms. And also uh, point out that this channel is now one year old. In that year, I have posted over 100 recipes. I'm sort of proud of myself. I started this a year ago on a whim. I didn't have any equipment yet, didn't have a proper camera, didn't have a mic, didn't have lights, didn't have anything, didn't even know to face this direction. I, I used my first video of all, I faced the stove facing that direction. Um, but I am proud of myself for starting it and staying with it, and I'm happy you guys have been, used my subscribers have been staying with me too. Um, all right, enough of that. I'm going, actually, after I post this, after this recipe, I'm going to do a little uh, retrospective in this video of some of the highlights of uh, last year. And so stick around and watch that too. This is a very simple recipe. I took four uh, large portobello mushrooms. This ma they're marinating in what is a quarter cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of soy sauce, low sodium soy sauce, a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar, and about a tablespoon or so of sriracha or sambal oleg or some other sort of hot uh, hot sauce. The most important thing about this recipe really is that you need to scrape out, this, this guy got kind of bumped up in the bag so I didn't marinate this one, just so I could demonstrate. You have to scrape out the ribs, take out the, the stem and scrape the ribs out of the bottom of the mushroom. This is the top and in the bottom because those things can be bitter so you don't want that. So you want them scraped out so they look, they're like, like a so, they're clean inside. And you want your, your pan very hot so you hear that sizzle right away. A little extra marinade that I'm going to hang on to because I might want to drizzle some on when they're cooked. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This recipe, I will leave these on this side for about three minutes and then I will turn them for three or four minutes on the other side and that is it. Serve them with a little salad or make, have them as, as a burger or serve them with a little bit more of the marinade drizzled upon them. Whatever you desire. And with that, I will uh, enjoy, sit back and enjoy uh, what I think are the best moments of my first year here as a YouTuber. Uh, this is my Instagram and Twitter handles, and uh, off, on with the show. Thanks. And please subscribe. All right, bye. Hello, my name is Christine Elise, and this is Delightful, Delicious, to Lovely. Firecracker chicken is vegan. Um, it's from China. That's well, not from China. A joke. I jest, of course. I jest because... I'm not political at all, and I wouldn't want you guys to get the wrong idea. When this is done, it won't be long, I'm going to serve it over rice. Um, this is pre-made. Pre-made about a week and a half ago, and it's not good anymore. <clears throat> if I give you a visual, because you might not know what rice is, but uh, you definitely don't know what spoiled rice is, unless you've been in my kitchen, and it's not good. It smells a lot. Even from this distance, it smells like... Like my spinning shoes do after six months, and it's really not good. So, make fresh rice and bathing in the single girl. It is dirty comedy, uh, not erotica. It is regrettable, embarrassing sex, um, uh, and it is not at all autobiographical. Um, that said, it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm a Boston girl. St. Patrick's Day is huge there huge for going out and getting drunk and taking green beer and seeing a parade and being sort of just all around belligerent. I call it amateur day. It's not a day that I go out to drink. It's a day like any other where I stay home alone and drink. Um, I don't have any green pants. Didn't even have any green underpants. So um, this is what you're going to get. It's all I could find. Um, later on today, I will be posting my recipe for vegan beef stew. That's over here. Mmm, smells delicious. The recipe's coming later. So with that, we can get on with it. So amateur. All right, in my little handy dandy Ron English elephant glass, I'm going to squeeze some lime juice. Um, so yesterday, I had to go shoot some photos for my friend, Naomi. She has a product coming out called Emendum. It's a hydration hack. Um, put a couple of drops of this in, in your water and it's all electrolytes with no sugar or caffeine. And she made a really great suggestion after that. She said, I don't know why we wouldn't go have a boozy lunch. 
So we probably did that. We went to Foreman's. I had a big old thing of French fries. We had we had basil gimlets. We had champagne. And then we went shopping, because that's what you're supposed to do when you're half in the bag. Two garlic cloves. Terry. Terry's really going for it over there. Um, technically, I was challenged yesterday as well, and I went on to make this recipe, which I did. Um, when I was editing it, I realized that about halfway through, the sound began, woo, 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 woo. my voice would go in and out like that. So now I'm making the whole thing over again, and I considered just putting on the same outfit and pretending that it was and editing together the two days worth of stuff and hoping it matched, but I realized I'm not good enough at hair and makeup to make that match, and I had a chance to wear a different dress, so why not? Hello and welcome to Delightful, Delicious, to Lovely. So I'm making the whole thing over again. Seriously? It's a big clump in here. It's solid, just stuck. I don't, yeah, hear that? That's not good. I am going to have dinner with my friend Stuart and his friend Puddles and Puddles' wife. Puddles is, if you don't know who he is, look him up here on YouTube. He is the sad clown with the golden voice and he is tremendous, amazing live. I've seen him a few times, you should go. It's a great show for all ages. Your parents will love it, your kids will love it, everyone will love it. Um, and he is, he's a turning vegan clown. Um, so he'll be eating this very dish tonight. That's very exciting for me to have some <laughs> But first I want to address something that happened yesterday. Yesterday I posted my green enchilada and spicy chili mac and cheese with, av with not avocado, with cauliflower. Um, and I promoted it sort of referencing or blatantly referencing the dress I was wearing in the video, uh, which I didn't realize was quite as presentational as it was until I was editing it. So I decided to embrace that fact and sort of make fun of myself for being Dolly Parton in a cooking video. Um, and I got a lot of reactions to that promotion. Um, to the people that think I uh, just said the word boob, 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 fun bag, boob, uh, 4,000 times in the promo for that post just to get viewers. Um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't want to make a cooking show that nobody watches, and uh, yeah, so yeah, there's that. accused of some other things too though. I got accused of, um, well I was informed first of all that in New Jersey uh, it's not legal for me to have no sleeves and a low cut top on when I'm cooking. I'm not sure how that relates to me cooking my own food for myself in my own kitchen in Los Angeles, but it was an interesting bit of information. Um, somebody else was motivated to tell me that they wished North Korea would bomb America and that we would all die. I'm not sure what was so upsetting about the enchilada recipe that put him in that mood. Um, but I got a lot, 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 lot of slut shaming. I got a lot of slut shaming for saying the word boob like six times. Um, and I've been accused of a lot of things in my life, primarily uh, <laughs> over accessorizing and not blending my eyeshadow well. But I have never been accused of being a slut. And if you know me, you know how ridiculous that is. Um, but to the people that thought, what I did was slutty, or that my dress was slutty, or the way I promoted the post was slutty. If you think I was a slut because of that, you need to read my book, because this shit is slutty. So if you were offended by my post, you need to dig into this and get yourself all worked up. Get your panties in a bunch, bathing in the single girl, just sluts on parade. So knock yourselves out. Voila. So, moving on from that. Um, uh, you may have noticed I have a collection of vinyl dolls here on the, on the counter. Um, this is uh, the fat Ronald McDonald from the Super Size Me documentary. My friend Ron English is the artist that 
designs these guys. He's a little Ron English doll he made of himself. Um, he does. He's a great, tremendous artist. His site's propaganda.com, P-O-P, propaganda.com. Uh, he's a great political activist against sugar and foods and cigarettes advertised to kids and that kind of thing. He's got a long, uh, long, um, a whole bunch of toys with three eyes and a whole bunch of toys with three boobs, which happens to be fitting right now, hashtag boob, uh, for me and this uh, channel having some boob controversy. Um, okay, so this is Terry. Terry's my foster. Terry's nervous. He's the one you always hear snoring. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, I know it, honey. I know I'm busy. Um, and I came home and ate some dinner, had some pasta, and of course I had more wine. And then I got cleaned up, got in my pajamas, was all my face was cleaned, and she texted me that she was going to go to Jumbo's. I should meet them at Jumbo's, which, if you know me, you know I love myself some Jumbo's. So I went to Jumbo's last night, ill-advised, but fun all the same. So I went to Jumbo's. Uh, she was there with Tara, and there was a man there that I didn't know. Um, he was very sweet. I kept showing him. I kept, I kept uh, demanding that he acknowledge that I had come out from having been in my pajamas and that I wasn't wearing any makeup, and I kept showing him uh, how ugly I am. <laughs> anyway, I uh, woke up this morning feeling like death. Thought I lost my credit card. I didn't. I thought I did. Uh, and then I asked my friend Naomi who was the man was last night. Who was that guy at the table with us? Oh yeah, that was just Danny Zucker, executive producer of Modern Family. That's fantastic. That's fantastic that I'm sitting there at Jumbo's with him, showing him my ravaged 52-year-old face without makeup, half in the bag, about three quarters of the way in the bag probably. I wonder what kind of an impression I made. Frame. Um, yeah. Ha -ha! Uh, so unlike me to have on skin tight pants. Um, I have this spiralizer that I won um, in a contest and tried to use once, and it's like some 1950s like beheading device. I couldn't figure it out. It's above my pay grade. Um, but I also have um, one of these. It's a Vegetti. Vegetti sounds a lot like for JJ, but. Uh, Vegetti, I think. Vegetti? Um, way easier anyway. I'm rambling. When I added coconut sugar instead of white sugar, it did not come out great. It broke it. It broke her recipe. Because this is just, yeah, it's a hard rock of jalapeno encrusted by, look at that. It looks like a hair clip. It looks like hard brown plastic. <laughs> All right, that looks hot. How can something look hot? It looks hot. Oh, speaking of which, I'm also in sort of a a mullet of an outfit. I'm, I'm, you know, a mullet, mullet's a business up front, party in the back. I'm sort of cocktail tire in the attire in the middle, and a biker chick. On the, on the top and bottom. These are the greatest things ever. These are boot socks. I'm all about them. You can wear them up so that no one can tell that they don't that they don't go all the way up. Or you can roll them down, show a little knee. Whatever. But there you have it. Mention something um, that I've been seeing a lot in my comments on this channel. A lot of people are saying, I'm not vegan but that looks delicious, or I'm not vegan, but I'll pass this recipe on to my vegan friends. And to that I say, why do you have to be vegan to eat a vegan dish? Um, I don't look at like <laughs> Italian food and say I'm not Italian, but that looks good. I'll pass this on to my Italian friends, or you know, Mexican or Chinese. I just, it's like you eat what you eat, so why not eat a vegan meal once in a while, even if you're not vegan? But I've been getting a lot of grief from the vegan and vegetarian community as well, which is sort of frustrating and vexing. Um, I'm getting objections to the same thing. I'm getting objections to, for using the word pork or for spelling pork correctly or um, not putting quotation marks around the word pork. Um, and I want to explain why I don't do some of these things. I want to explain, first of all, why I don't use fake names for, if, I, if I'm making a Chinese dish that is green beans and minced pork, um, 
If I spell pork, P-O-R-Q, no one's going to find it. No one's going to, on the internet, be able to search it and find it. Uh, if I spell chicken, C-H-I-K apostrophe N, or um, it's just confusing and makes it an unsearchable term for the internet. Also, uh, real, really, my main purpose for do, using the real term for the fake thing is that Making food for vegans is sort of preaching to the choir. I'm trying to win over people that eat meat and show them how great a vegan dish can be and how, uh, how it won't leave them feeling unsatisfied or missing things they think they can't live without. Bacon, of course, being top on everybody's list. Everybody eats bacon and they think they die if they don't have it. I was looking for a nice little glass to serve this Verna in and uh, I found these three shot glasses that I'd forgotten one of my friends had given me and they say she drink she drank, she drunk. She drank, she drank, she drunk. And you might say, oh, that's because you went to Boston Latin School and she's just uh, paying homage to you and conjugating the verb to drink. But I don't think, in fact, that's what she's doing. I think she called me drank here because I also found these coasters that say drunkish on them. So I'm, I see a theme emerging. And uh, frankly, I'm proud of it. So FTW. And I had a vegan chef tell me that she uh, can't stand when people use terms like chicken and pork and beef uh, in their vegan dishes, and she never uses those terms. So God bless her, uh, but my job here isn't to be self-righteous. My job here is to try to make food that's delicious and accessible to people. Easy to make, delicious for everybody, meat eaters alike. And I just don't know what I'm doing that's getting everybody irate on, on both sides. It's really frustrating for me. Um, but you know what? I, I, I gotta be me. I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm not gonna spell pork with a fucking Q, and I'm not gonna put quotations around it. And if uh, vegans think it's more important to be uh, self righteous, then so be it. Not all vegans are, but the ones I'm being picked on by. Um, I guess I have a thin skin, uh, and I apologize for that. But anyway, on to this. I've made, I have a ton, 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 shit ton of Indian recipes on my blog. Um, big fan of Indian food. It was my go to resource uh, to eat flavorful things when I gave up meat in the 80s. Uh, I tried with the tofu back then. There weren't a lot of, I mean, it just, there, I just, it was sort of a wasteland to be a vegetarian back then. And I tried with the tofu and never really fell in love with it. And then I developed a big grudge against it because whenever I told anybody I was, uh, didn't eat meat, they'd say, oh, well, you must eat a lot of tofu. And it's like, I don't fucking eat any goddamn tofu. Fuck tofu. I had a chip on my shoulder about the tofu. Veganaise? Veganaise? I want to say veganaise, but... You don't say veganables or <laughs> vegables. You say vegetables. So vegetables. Anyway, I don't know how to say this word, but it's vegan mayonnaise. <laughs> Before I get started, I want to give a little shout out to my mom. My mother is fucking awesome. And she sent me a bunch of workout pants uh, for me to go spinning in. And among them were these things. They're awesome. They're like road warrior pants. And so I'm not wearing them to the gym. I'm wearing them out in life. So thank you, Gail. Uh, I love my mom. This time, could be different for you depending on how thick I got lazy that my first ones were very thin and then by the end I was like fuck this shit and I made them really fat so these guys are gonna take longer than those ones so can I be more of a dork I apologize you hear that snoring in the background it's Terry there he goes all right honestly that's it I don't know what more to tell you Oh, now I forgot a spatula. Uh, so I did that. I went, I ate it, and uh, at about 8 o'clock at night, fell asleep probably by 8.30. And then I woke up at midnight so high. I was, like, on acid. It was insane. I was completely freaked out and totally paranoid. And I was certain that something devastatingly terrible was going to happen. And in my mind, the worst thing that could possibly happen is something bad to my dogs. Moxie, stop barking! Um, so I began to fear that I was going to hurt my dogs, that I was going to like throw them off the balcony or something. Not that I wanted it to happen, but that was the worst possible thing I could imagine happening. And, uh, and so I, was, I laid in the bed, th like, what do I do? do I, how do I protect them? Do I, do I 
go put them in a different room while I'm sleeping? Do I sleep downstairs? Do I? I, I oh, then I became paranoid that I was feeding it. All my th thinking about it was feeding it too much energy, and. Uh, and then I was going to make it more likely to happen. I ended up actually slipping on my stomach on top of my hands. Like that, it's going to do anything. And of course, they didn't kill my dogs. These, these carrot replacements, the carrot hot dog and the carrot locks, um, they're just kind of, I think, an emotional <laughs> crutch more than something that actually brings flavor. They visually work, and it's sort of a fun novelty. And I don't think I would do it again, though. They're, they live in this world where nobody's as vegan as they are, so everybody else can fuck off. <clears throat> I don't subscribe to that philosophy. I don't think you're going to win over a single person by being mean to them. And I'm trying to win people over, as I just stated. I'm trying to win people over to think about even just doing Meatless Monday. Of course, I forgot a spatula. I think I get that right by now. I'm back, but I have another surprise. This is my latest foster. This is Hayden. She's got a big giant basketball of a head. She's a beautiful little one-year-old French bulldog. Hey, Dan, what do you think? She's like, it's hot. That's what I think, it's hot. She did this. What? What, what, what? doing the selfie? With this light on my face, so awesome. Oh shit, like this. I got this thing for $15 on Amazon. It needs charging, I guess, but uh, it came charged. I'm super happy with it. Uh, I don't think I'll use it, carry it on my phone all the time, but if I'm ever going out to a party or whatever the fuck, I'm putting that fucker on there because who doesn't like to be lit better? My dogs are playing behind me. Um, this is a disclaimer for the beginning of this recipe. Hayden, really? Can you not? Uh, even when I was... What was that? It's like somebody's in my house. Hang on. Okay, that was weird. It was nothing, but that scared me. I can't wait to look at this tape back and see what my scared face looked like. Um, what was I saying? Why is this happening like this? But it was a few people that were trying to be complimentary that really just <laughs> stuck a knife in my heart by saying things like, it's really great to see you aging gracefully and just letting all those wrinkles show. Or, I'm really glad that at the first signs of aging, you didn't just go for the knife. And I'll tell you what that makes you want to do. It makes you want to go for the knife. This is a Beyond Meat Chicken. If you watch my channel, you know I'm in love with this product. They call it fucking chickens right on the package. It's spelled correctly too. Um, I'm just going to marinate this chicken right in the bag. But I'm going with the warm dish this time. And of course, if you know me, you know I forget a fucking spatula every time. Here I go. Got it. And I have some leftover aged nut cheese. This Parmella Creamery aged nut cheese that is a, also a pepper jack flavor. Um, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think it should go without saying that aged nut cheese is really... An unfortunate thing to call food. I mean, how else are you supposed to know, to know what it is? What if I was to try to pitch this recipe and said I was making um, flavored plant protein strips? Like, would you would you want that? Or my minced pork thing? What if I was like, it's it's a spicy, it's a Thai spicy green beans with minced flavored gluten? I mean, nobody wants that. That's the kind of stuff people think vegans eat. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put some bells and whistles on that stuff. Put a little flash, a little glitz on it. Let's see. Oh, I don't have a measuring spoon. Fuck. Hold on. Measuring spoon. Hello and happy Halloween from delightful, delicious, to lovely. I'm going to start with. I need a spoon. God damn it. All right. Ah, look at this thing. That's kind of crazy. It's even got a hole drilled in it. Uh, I guess that's where the head would be with a butt, I don't know, to stuff it. So you can stuff the stuffing in there. It feels wrong to do that. And yeah, so I'm going to, I need a towel, hold on. I am going to uh, stuff it, or attempt to stuff it. I can't imagine how this much stuff can fit into that much turkey. 
sort of a laws of physics don't apply apparently. I'm going to give this, it was easy to do, and it tastes good. And it looks festive if you're one of the, not, not a vegan that's offended by fake meat. Clearly this is going to really offend somebody who doesn't think you should be eating fake meat. To even mock up a dead bird is actually psychologically kind of bizarre, but I'm into it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, if you're not into it, you're not into it. What can I say? And I need to comment again on what I've commented on in the past, which is the outrageous negativity of certain vegans out there who just can't seem to deal with the fact that not everybody is exactly like they are. It must be a horrible burden to need everyone in the world to be just like you and think just like you and behave just like you. Being vegan isn't good enough. You have to be their particular brand of vegan. Now I need a fucking spatula. Every single time. Uh, and I got blocked from a few groups. Not because they didn't understand that it was vegan. They did. Um, I withstood quite a bit of harassment. I never got ugly, but I got blocked. I'm banned from a couple, and a bunch of people blocked me too. That's fine. I blocked some people myself. That's, that's our prerogative, right? Um, certain people, I just don't need to hear what they have to think. Uh, mainly because it's profoundly negative and not supportive. I'm kind of in love with this thing. This thing cost me $100. It's massive. I didn't really anticipate getting one that would cater a fucking wedding, but I thought, I imagined it would come be like that. Um, I, I understand absolutely that you might not, if you're a vegan or even not a vegan, you might not want to eat something that looks so much like, and it really does look like. I cooked it and I photographed it intentionally to make it look as much like a turkey as I could possibly make it. And it was very, very convincing. And if you watch my episode, it's episode 63, uh, you'll see that it, I even displayed a little bit of discomfort with it. Um, there was a cavity drilled into it to stuff, which is weird put my fingers in it and that felt really weird um, and it felt weird cutting it it felt it was so much like a turkey but it isn't a turkey it's tofu that was put in a mold and it even has seams along the side of it that you can see a seam where the top and the bottom of the mold come together I'm gonna do my spatula chite here it is um, but this turkey has as much in common with a real turkey as a chocolate bunny has with a real bunny. I mean, it's just not a turkey. So while I understand if you don't want to eat it, that's great, or you don't want to serve it, I don't think you really have a lot of moral high ground over somebody who does want to eat it. It's still vegan. It's still a vegan product. And I feel like if you're vegan and you are concerned about wanting everybody to become vegan, uh, that you should be applauding products such as this that cater to people who are not maybe not even vegan yet, maybe they're still meat eaters, but they want these things, these visuals from their life, their, their customs from their life, they want them, makes them feel better about what they're eating. It doesn't have to make sense to you. You don't have to understand it for it still to be okay for somebody else. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm gonna fuck this up. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. Oh, oh it's liquidy. I see liquid. All right. Woo, oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that thing of beauty. Wow, I'm actually kind of impressed with it. I mean, even when I post regular vegan stuff that isn't even meat-centric looking, I get attacks. I get attacks for using sesame oil or for using white sugar. Or, you know, it's just this, I'm never good enough for everyone and uh, I don't even aim to be. So fuck off, fuck off all you negative people that are doing a huge disservice to the whole vegan community. We make uh, you know, at Black Flower. There's there's going to be every once in a while integrated into the menu vegan crepes, not on the menu. Vegan is vegan. <laughs> what am I saying? Vegan. Because I'm French. I think you're from France. <laughs> um, vegan. So, vegan. 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 Uh, vegan. So so this is a, a vegan crepe that uh, it's it, you guys are guinea pigs because we've never made this before. Okay. This is your uh, your your. This is your, the follow your, your heart. Your nut cheese. It's a smoked gouda. It's not nut cheese. Never say nut cheese. No. No. <laughs> Nobody wants to eat nut, nut cheese. cheese. No, it's not a good it's thing. It's nut cheese. <laughs> and so I'm, uh, maybe anything we, else. We can say what do we it's have. Smoked nut cheese. So we'll take that. Jimmy, we can say what do we have now? We have some cranberry. We're gonna put. So we're gonna. Yeah, cran these are dried cranberries. These are um, uh, toasted, almonds. toasted almonds. This is your nut. You're not winning over a single person with that attitude and by attacking people for asking, you know, what can I use as a cheese replacement? And the comeback is, why do you want to eat cow pus? Or somebody called this a carcass with um, 
stuffing up its anal cavity. Carcass with stuffing up its anal cavity. I mean, the, the words used are deliberately chosen to be as harsh and offensive as possible. It does not convert a single human being. In fact, I promise you that more people, when they're treated like that, go back to go, go back. Say, fuck it, just get, go get a big hunk of brie and eat it. I don't think you win a single person over, and that is my solo goal: is to win some people over and to get them eating food that doesn't involve death. And I don't know why that's a controversial position, but. OMG with these people, bullying isn't cool anywhere, and it's especially offensive to me when vegans are doing it to other vegans, or vegetarians even. It's just horse shit. And with that, I'll get on with this recipe. <laughs> okay, I don't know, there's something about me that makes people feel aggressive. I get a lot of flack uh, for posting vegan things on vegan groups. I get, uh, somebody blocked me from a vegetarian group, I don't know why, uh, the militant ones that just seem to need to be on their own soapbox and self-congratulate rather than do anything that helps anybody else navigate their way into being or remaining vegan. Uh, red lentil curry. Uh, initially this was a slow cooker recipe. I'm going to do it today with my instant pot. I'm going to let it cook for 10 minutes on manual and then I'm going to let it naturally decompress, which should take another 10 minutes or so. Okay, I did the 10 minutes and I let it uh, um, decompress naturally and it looks like that. <laughs> I'm just trying to pretend I'm really a cook, but I really am, and this really is delicious. This is just now it's become a red lentil curry soup rather than a red lentil curry that you'd put on rice. Do I dare? I'm just gonna go for it. Fuck it. All right, I'm flipping. Okay. Of course, I've forgotten a fucking spatula because that's my trademark at this point in time. Excuse me. Got it. Ah! Okay. Blow me, fucking fucker. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll come back. Please subscribe. And uh, and yeah, feel free to look back at the older stuff that I have already posted. And um, yeah, thanks. Bye.